Hello and welcome to today's 80s retro text effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and this design brings back memories when I was growing up in the 80s. Yes, I'm that old and it's amazing to me that this design is now considered retro. But check this out. This is the retro design you're going to learn how to create today. When you're done, you'll know how to create stars, lens flares, strokes, reflective text, and more. So, are you ready to master this GIMP text effect? Awesome, let's do it. Let's create our new document for this project by going up to File, New, and setting the size to 1920 for the width, 1080 for the height, and the resolution we're going to set to 300. Let's grab our foreground color here and switch that to black. And we're going to fill in our first layer here with the foreground color. Now let's grab our text tool with the letter T. The first one, I'm going to use the Road Rage font, and I'm gonna set that at 150. For the color, I'm going to choose this bright pink color, and here's the number if you wanna use the same color. Okay, I'm gonna type out, out, run, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit my escape key, and then I can begin typing out the next set of content, but first, let's change the font to Oswald Bold, Let's do this one at 300 for the size and for the color, we're going to set it to white. So we have in all caps retro. I want to add a little bit of spacing between these letters as well. So just double click until everything is selected and then click on this icon a few times. So maybe 10 for the spacing. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool here so I can go ahead and move this content into position. Let's grab our alignment tool so we can align our text directly in the center here. So you can grab that with the letter Q or via your toolbar. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on retro here to activate that layer so GIMP knows that we want to align that specific layer. Under our two options here, we're going to set relative to the first item, and then we're going to align horizontal center of target and vertical. All right, let's grab our move tool and let's move Outrun into position right here. I'm not too worried about this being perfectly centered. It can be off just a little bit. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and place it right there. So we don't really need this content for a while. So let's go ahead and turn that off. All right, let's go ahead and double click on our layer name right here so we can rename this Retro Original. So we're gonna have a lot of layers in this project and it's nice to have everything organized and named according to what that particular layer is all about, the content or the edit that's being applied or both. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer here so we can work non-destructively in case we need to come back to the original. I'm gonna double click and call this gradient one, and we're going to right click and click on alpha to selection, which is going to select all the letters in our word here. So that's going to allow us to apply an edit directly inside of that selection and not on the outside or the rest of the canvas. So I'm gonna come over here and grab my foreground color so I can switch that to white. And then for my background color, I'm gonna set it to this blue color and we're going to add a gradient based on those two colors. So grab your gradient tool and then under your gradients panel right here, if you don't see this, Go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and select Gradient from here. So under here, we want to select this one right here, Foreground to Background RGB. I'm gonna click up here and drag down, and that adds the gradient. Now before it's applied, or before we apply it, we can make some alterations to it. We can make it longer or shorter, depending on our creative vision for this particular edit or any edit that we're working on. For this, I want to reverse it. So I can come over here and click on this reverse button. Of course, I could have started the gradient down here and worked up, so I wouldn't have to do that, but sometimes we make a mistake and we can quickly correct that with the reverse button. So I want it to be a little bit darker up here at the top, so I'm gonna click and drag this one down. So I think maybe something like that will work out pretty good. 
I'm gonna go ahead and click enter or return to apply that edit. Let's deselect it by going up to select and choosing none from here. We have a keyboard shortcut right here, shift plus control plus A. I'm going to use that throughout the rest of this tutorial versus coming up here to the menu because we are going to be doing a lot of selecting and deselecting. Let's go back to our layer panel and duplicate this layer here. Just click on this icon right here and let's call it gradient two. Let's grab our rectangle select tool so we can make a selection. And I'm gonna start up here in the top left and then I'm going to have that bottom line intersect somewhere in the middle of the text. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to eyeball it right about there. And then we're going to delete that content. So hit your delete key or your backspace key to delete it. And to confirm, just turn off this layer right here. All right, let's deselect with Control, Shift, and A. All right, we're going to add another gradient. Let's go ahead and turn off gradient one so we can see what we're working on here. So grab your gradient tool again, and then in your gradients panel, we're going to select this option here, foreground to background HSV clockwise. So I'm gonna start down here and click and drag up. And there's the problem that we have when we don't make a selection of the letter. So we're going to undo that with command or control and the letter Z. So let's go back to our layers panel and right click on our gradient and select alpha to selection. Now we can confine that edit directly inside of that selection. So maybe something like that, but again, I think I want to reverse this. I want the blue on top. I need to bring this node down so I can see some of that blue color. So maybe something like that. Go ahead and click enter or return and deselect with Control, Shift, and A. Let's go ahead and turn this layer back on and the retro original as well. And then we're going to right click on our gradient layer here and we're going to add a selection to it again. Let's create a new layer and let's call it Stroke and click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my zoom tool with the letter Z and zoom in a little bit so I can show you what happens to our selection for this part of the edit. We're gonna go up to select and choose grow. I'm gonna set this to six, actually seven pixels and click okay. And you can see that the selection, well, it grew much larger and this allows us to put a stroke around our content. So with my gradient tool selected and the same colors and options that we used previously, I'm gonna start up here and drag down. Now, right now it's covering up the rest of the text and that's because our stroke layer here is above the other gradient just below it. So let's go ahead and move that down one just below it and now we have a nice gradient stroke around it. But I do wanna undo that because I wanna change the gradient just a little bit. So I'm going to undo that with command or control and the letter Z or just go up to edit and choose undo from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this layer below that gradient and I'm gonna go ahead and start down here and add it in this direction. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and reverse that to something like that, maybe a little bit less white at the top. So that's looking pretty good. I like that right there, maybe a little bit more blue down here. So right there, okay, enter or return and deselect. All right, let's right click on stroke here and we're going to make another selection. We're gonna create a new layer. This time, let's call it Glow. Click OK. Let's move it below the stroke, and let's go back to Select and grow it to 10 pixels. We're going to fill it in with the same dark blue color here that we have for our background color, and we can do that quickly and easily by going up to Edit and selecting Fill with background color. Okay, go ahead and deselect. And now we're gonna go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, so we can blur that to create a glow behind the text. So I'm gonna increase this to right about there. And then, let's see, I don't think there's anything else I wanna do for this. Maybe a little bit larger maybe a little more. So right about there, go ahead and click OK. It's a little intense right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the opacity to tone it down just a little bit. So maybe right around 50. 
Before we begin on the next step, let's group all these layers together. Let's click on this top layer, right click and select new layer group. Now grab this layer, click and drag it up until you see that outline and release and it will be placed inside of that layer group. We're gonna add these other ones as well. Okay, let's take this layer group and let's call it step one and let's duplicate it and turn it off. Again, we wanna work non-destructively in case we make a mistake or we don't like the direction the project is going in. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this step two. For our next step, we're going to tilt the retro text here by grabbing our shear tool right here in our toolbar. The keyboard shortcut is shift plus H. Just click and drag it to the right to have it lean a little bit to the right. So I think right about there looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter or return. And let's go ahead and turn on our outrun text as well. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out here. I'm just holding down my control key as I zoom out. All right, next we're going to add the image that I provided for you. So hopefully you downloaded that already. If not, find the link in the description below. Once you have it downloaded, find the file on your operating system, click on it and drag it to your document and it will automatically be added as a new layer. So I'm gonna pull it out of this group and drag it down here below the other layers to pull it out of the grouped layer. Now it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a line right there, a white one. And then if I come down just a little bit more, it gets a little bit longer. So once you see that longer line release and it will be added below all these layers and outside of the grouped layer. So the file that I downloaded is smaller than my canvas, so I need to resize it. So I'm gonna come up here and select my scale tool. I'm going to click on it and I'm gonna make sure that these two are locked together. And then I'm going to type in 1920 for the width, which gives me a height of 1080. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the center right here and move it into position. So right about there, click enter or return. And now we're getting pretty close to the end of the project. It's almost done. We need to bring our outrun content right here and bring it above the background layer here so we can actually see that content as well. Now for my final project, I removed parts of this background layer here. We can see on the side here, we don't have the light leak effect that we have here. So that's entirely up to you. I do wanna remove it because I wanna add my own stars. This image does have stars included in it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and select this layer. I also want to drop the opacity so that it kind of blends in with the background as well. So I'm going to place this right at 15 for the opacity and that reduces the light leaks as well as the stars in the background. The other thing I want to do is I want to grab my move tool and I want to move this down. Okay, it looks like I have the wrong layer selected and that's because I have my tool option set up to pick a layer or guide. So if I click on this, it's going to select the layer that I click on versus the layer that's active. So I'm gonna set this to move the active layer, reselect the background, and then I can go ahead and move this down. So I want the text to be right at the end of it. So right about there should be pretty good. Let's add a layer mask. I'm also going to rename this background image. Click on this icon to add a layer mask in white. In order to use the layer mask, we need to paint with black to remove. So we need to switch our foreground color to black. Just click on these little icons right here and it's going to update your foreground and background colors based on those two colors there. So now I can come over here with my brush and paint away in this area to remove that light leak. Now, if you make a mistake or you decide you wanna add that back, go ahead and switch your foreground and background colors so you can paint with white because white will bring it back. Now the keyboard shortcut to switch or swap these colors is the letter X. So you can continue editing on your canvas and switch back and forth between those two colors with that keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that again. And then over here, I'm just gonna paint a little bit over here. I can faintly see a little bit of that light leak there. So I'm going to remove it. And next, I wanna increase my brush size so I can get rid of these stars in the background. So I'm just going to click and drag across the top here. It's kinda of hard to see them, but they're there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove them from there because we're going to add our own stars. 
So let's create a new layer for our stars by clicking on this icon right here. Let's call it stars. And we're going to fill it in with the foreground color, which is currently black for me. So make sure your foreground color is set to black. Click OK because we want that new layer filled with black. And then we're going to move it below the background layer. Now let's go up to filters, noise, and HSV noise to add our stars. Increase your value to add some stars. If that's too much, of course, you can bring that down or you can use the doling option here to add some more black in between to reduce the stars that way. I also want to add some color to the stars by increasing the saturation. So something like that looks pretty good. Go ahead and click OK. Now it's really way too many stars. So let's tone this down a little bit by going up to colors and choosing our levels tool. From here, we can adjust the black points of the tonal range in that layer. So I'm going to click on this little node right here and drag it to the right. So you can see, I'm going to move this over, that there's fewer stars than there was before. So you can adjust this to your own personal preference. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to remove some of these stars down here. So I'm going to add a layer mask. Click right here. Make sure you have white selected and click Add. Grab your gradient tool, make sure foreground is set to black and click right here and then drag down. So it's beginning to remove the stars here. And then once it gets to this point underneath it, the stars are removed completely. So that's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and click enter or return. We can see there's still some stars down here, not so much down here. They're completely gone. So two more steps left and the next step includes adding a lens flare. So let's create a new layer for it. We're going to call it lens flare. We're going to fill it in with the foreground color, which should be black. So make sure your foreground color is set to black and go ahead and click OK. We're going to click and drag this all the way up to the top right here. Now it's going to be hard to see where that lens flare is positioned within the content because everything else is not visible now. So we're going to fix that by dropping the opacity temporarily. And then we're going to go up to filters, light and shadow and selecting lens flare. So now I can use these options here to position the lens flare exactly where I want it. So I'm going to drag the X position over here to the right because I want it on that letter O. Now, if it's moving both the X and the Y at the same time, unlock the two so that they're not linked together. Then I can take the Y position here and adjust it accordingly until it's exactly where I want it. So maybe I think right there looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click OK because I like that. And what I want to do now is increase the opacity back to 100, but I need to choose a blending mode so it blends in with the layers below. And we can do that with screen. So go ahead and select that and boom, you now have a lens flare. How? cool is that I love it actually I think the intensity is a little bit too much so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the opacity down to I don't know what do you think something around 50 or less that's entirely up to you all right so we have one more step left and that's to age the overall artwork so it has more of that old school 80s retro feel so let's do that by, actually, let's do this. Right click on lens flare and select new from visible. What that does is it takes all your layers here and merges them into one. So we can turn off all these layers, but we still have that content there. So again, working non-destructively. So let's go up to, let's try colors and let's go with curves. What I wanna do is add a matte like effect which kind of fades out the overall artwork and gives it that retro feel. And we do that by grabbing the bottom left corner here and dragging it up. And that reduces the black point or the black points in the image and kind of fades it out. I don't want to go too much, maybe right about there. And then I want to target a specific color channel. So click right here and select blue. And I want to increase the blue which is reminiscent of the 80s. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase that just a little bit, maybe right about there. And let's take a look at the before and after by clicking on preview. 
So that gives it more of a retro feel. At least I think it does. You can play around with these different color channels to come up with something based on your own creative vision. All right, now it's your turn to complete this text design project and to post it in our private Facebook group. To join our group, you can locate the link in the description below. Also, please support my channel by commenting on this video, liking it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Don't forget to check out my GIMP text effects playlist that has over 20 more tutorials and projects on text effects. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.